front, but I appreciate all that. Appreciate all that. I am His Excellency President Kevin Baugh of the Republic of Malaysia. Who here has heard of the Republic of Malaysia? Well, that's good. I just walked around talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, so since you guys all know, I hope you have a wonderful evening. <laughs> <laughs> Can't everyone hear me okay? You guys can hear me all right? Yeah. No, not at all. Here, I shake. I can hear the microphone, but it just seems like old school. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, we like it. We have a step folks up front. <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the Republic of Malaysia. Uh, that is our own sovereign country. I think you even said that. Right down the road. Are you going to go back and forth? I don't know where to stand. <laughs> yeah. Is that better? Well, I mean, it's technical. All right, so the Republic of Malaysia is called a micronation, which is a tiny self declared country. Uh, it's not recognized by the, uh, for lack of a better word, established nations uh, around the world. We sort of do it on, do it on our own, if you will. Uh, Malaysia was originally founded on 26 May of 1977. Uh, I was 15 years old. And uh, back then, it was known as the Grand Republic of Goldstein. Uh, I was the Prime Minister when my friend James was the King. If anybody remembers the, the old, no offense, we have a little older crowd here. But anyway, who remembers the old movie, The Mouse of the Roar, with Peter Sellers? You have a few hands there? Fantastic. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, well, you've it's seen it too? It's required watching. It is required watching. But not as we in the film. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, in that movie, uh, a tiny country in Europe invades the United States, expecting to lose the war, and in fact wins the war uh, through a series of uh, curious incidents. And uh, it's, it's fun. It's funny. But anyway, we, my friend James and I were really struck by the imagination and creativity of the set up our own country. Uh, he was king, and yes, the Republic of the King, and I was prime minister. Uh, very shortly after that, he moved on to other projects, but I stayed with the idea of having my own country. And uh, when I finally settled in Northern Nevada in 1998, uh, that became the home to our nation, then renamed the Republic of Malaysia, and we've been going strong ever since. So, 26 May is our, is our Founders Day. That's the day that we uh, celebrate the establishment of our nation. So it's now a holiday for So, yay! Woo All right, so, anyway, wait, go ahead. Stamps, 
laws talk a little bit about the, the uh, money and, and money. Uh, obviously a culture. We have our own phone system in Malasi. We have Malasi and you too can, can participate in the Malasi and phone system, which kind of raised me to a point. But even though we like to laugh and we get a good time in our nation, we consider Malasi to be a sovereign nation within the United States. Which the head structures that might be, that's what we think, even though it's a tiny country kind of lacking in, uh, you know, like resources and so forth to uh, stand on our own two feet, but we do our absolute best. And so, one tiny part of that, we were really proud of our phone system because it functions, it works, and we like things that actually work in our country, uh, along with laughing and having a really good time. We also have our own railroad. We have a farm, functioning farms, so back to that functioning thing. Um, so we grow, yeah, corn, that's it. <laughs> and a variety of other vegetables that I don't actually eat because I'm the president of uh, And <laughs> we have our own space program, that's right, we launch, we launch rockets. In fact, I'm thinking we might start a whole, like, moon landing thing. Since the U.S. is going back to the moon after 50 years of not going back to the moon, we might do it too. We'll at least have moon pies. Huh? We will at least have moon pies. Well, we might be yeah, so actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Let's take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll see you have a moment with one of the other aspects of the culture. We have our own holidays. That's one of them, actually, moon pie day. We celebrate moon pies, and moon pies are absolutely awesome. We also have Chocolate Moon Day, and we have a day, a special holiday just for our dogs, which is fantastic. I mean, it's great to your own country. We have all kinds of holidays. I spent a lot of time in Germany back in the 80s. Those folks have a holiday about once a week. I was inspired. You know, absolutely. We were shut down at least once a week. And we do have our own movies, and uh, you can go to our website. We have a YouTube channel, all kinds of different movies. A lot of our activities are filmed uh, that we do. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our military, our space program as well. Um, and then we have our own radio station. We have a radio program that comes out once a month, uh, about 15, 20 minutes long. I guess if you're really bored, you can to do it over and over again. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to feel like you did. But anyway, um, yeah, that is our flag. Blue, white, and green. Blue for the sky. White for the mountains, especially in the time when there's snow. That's what we want up in the mountains, not down in Malasi itself. And green for the desert in the springtime, especially when it's nice and green. On, on that note, talking about the sky, in Malasi, it is a law. Sunshine is guaranteed with masses. We always have perfect weather in Malasi. It's 70 degrees. It only rains at night when it's not even convenient. But we're so close to the border with the U.S., their crappy weather blows in all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have our national animal. I'm sure you probably have seen our national animal around, wandering across the roads and so forth like that. That is a wild horse, or the Mustang. So, and I usually encourage when our folks come, folks come visit our nation, I encourage them to watch out for our national animal. Uh, sometimes they'll be in the road and uh, they have no traffic laws whatsoever. I think we kind of all uh, know that one. Now, we talked a bit, I mentioned it didn't go about money. This is our currency. This is called the Valora, which means valuable in our second language, Esperanto. Um, the, our Valora, which you can see my lovely face and my wife, the first lady who loved their face on there, is not based on something worthless like gold, silver, you know, something like that. No, much more valuable. We are on the chocolate chip cookie dough standard. <laughs> That's right. And in fact, the folks of the country, they actually will bring us tubes of cookie dough. We'll, we'll, we'll do a swap for, uh, for our bank note, especially like the Bible Laura is about the same value as that. Uh, we, we are usually rolling in the dough. Oh. That's, a, that's a first lady. That's my turn. <laughs> she claims she she that. That's <laughs> fun. But she will, absolutely. Um, in fact, we have, we have, speaking of money, so we have a variety of institutions as every country should have. We have the Malasia Post Office, you see right that right there. And over on the right, that is the Bank of Malasia, where our money is not stored, because now that I told you where the bank is, everyone will sneak in and swipe But that is also where our Greek Dover Depository is, at least the one that we allow you to see, which is state secret and so forth. The heart of Malasia is what we call Red Square. That's where not only Malasia Post Office is, but and the Bank of Malasia, my own office, office of the president, and 
We have a treaty post there, a treaty, a trading company. So if you come visit our nation, you want to buy a souvenir. Because who doesn't want to buy a souvenir when you go to a foreign country? You know, absolutely. So I have some t-shirts or bumper stickers, postcards, things like that. Uh, and then, um, come back to that thought that just came into my head. And then we also have, well, let's see, the bar and grill, the Tiki Hut bar and grill. Uh, wait, I think they have a thing here. There, right there. There it is. That is a Tiki Hut bar and grill. So we have all the bar and grill in Alaska, which it actually really is, especially the, the grill part. <laughs> so, we have a lot of heavy drinkers in Alaska. <laughs> but at any rate, so I was going to uh, sort of backtrack this a little bit. I mentioned that Malaysia is a micronation. Again, I mean, it's a third country. There are a lot of micronations, uh, actually, all over the world. Um, in fact, this last weekend, we went to what we call MicroCon, which is sort of a micronation convention. And we met up with just, I think, 41 different micronations visited, and that's just a small slice of micronations from all over the world. It's an absolutely fantastic thing. Having your own country, super cool. I highly recommend it. If you're not, you know, if you're bored, go ahead and do it. Right? <laughs> the best audience for right? <laughs> so, But it is, it's really fun to get together with other micronationals and see what their idea of uh, a country is. Malaysia is fairly standard in what uh, countries look like. We have, you know, borders and flag and, and all the usual things that you see. Also, Malaysia is unique. And then we actually plan. Most micronations don't. And so they're like online and so forth like that. Because, just like I did uh, back in the day, um, most micronationalists are younger, they're in their teens, and they don't have the resources to do uh, something. If they stay they actually with the idea, they could eventually, you know, have my attitude come to You could be in 20, 30 years visiting one of these uh, folks' country that we saw this uh, last weekend. So I just want to kind of mention that about micronations. They are kind of all over. Really fun. Um, I, I mentioned that Malaysia is kind of a traditional type uh, country because again we do have our own established borders and so forth. But uh, one of one of my favorite examples, or my favorite example of another kind of migration, uh, is a nation called Subsidium. And their entire country is a rock about this big. They carry around <laughs> the suitcase. Actually, they work rock over too, so I guess two rocks. See another flight. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, the idea is you can actually touch the highest point in our country. You know, there's <laughs> at any rate, the idea for Sydney's case is is they don't necessarily believe that, that borders are even land necessary to have a country is more like what about cultures and people, you know, people who are sort of like well, similar backgrounds, similar cultures doing you know, pretty much the same thing. Um, and I like that. I like that that's a that's a nice approach. It's not our approach, but it's kind of nice it's, it's refreshing to get together with these other uh, micronationals and just kind of see what their idea is. And uh, I'm not going to lie, we've been doing this for a very long time, over six years. But every single time we meet up with micronationals from, uh, from other micronations, we're inspired, hey, they're doing cool things. Maybe I'd adopt that idea. You know, the one fellow has a micronation, the young man has a micronation up in uh, Seattle. And the way you leave his micronation is by zip line. Oh, <laughs> You gotta go that way. But, <laughs> and I mean, I, I we met him about a year ago, and I thought that was like the greatest thing ever. The first lady's like, yeah, but liability. <laughs> yeah. Is it like you stay on the ground while you do it? But again, so it's kind of fun to explore different ideas of what makes a country, which is really what we're doing with the Rolling Malasi. We're exploring the idea. Of what makes a country, and seeing where we can go with that idea, uh, using our imagination, our creativity. Uh, we are not a, uh, I don't know, phrase like a, like a separatist type thing or something. Uh, you know, we're, we're gonna we need the U.S. government and all that. We don't. We live inside the U.S. You know, we definitely go to the Fourth of July. So you know, I mean, so we're not we're not that kind. Of, we're not that approach. We we are serious about our nation. We do put a lot of effort into our nation and building and making. Is but we're not a board for uh, like some of so just kind of kind of get that out there now. Malasia's culture. Um, is this better now? Than, uh, I'm, uh, it's like I hear me just fine. Uh, well, you guys. All right, so we have a very active culture in Malasia. Sometimes we will adopt holidays from other countries. 
Uh, in November, there's a holiday called Guy Fox, where you burn little, little guys in effigy in the fire, uh, and we do that. Uh, the blood. Fifth. Fifth. Fifth of November. Fifth of November, that's November. right. November. But we do have our own things that we come up with. Uh, Malasia has, our national sport is called broom ball. Okay? <laughs> Basically, it's brooms and a ball, and there are no rules. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty much anything goes with broom ball. I mean, technically, you don't even have to have the brooms or the ball. It's going to be a really short game. But I mean, if you, if you want to have teams, not have teams, switch teams in the middle, have extra teams, uh, I don't know, just it. Just have sword fights with the broomsticks, whatever you want to do. It's completely utter chaos. We do this about once a year. It's kind of exhausting playing a game. You don't know when it's supposed to end because there's no scoring. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for about 10 to 15 minutes, we whack the ball around and we go have barbecue. <laughs> and that's one of our fantastic aspects of our culture. Uh, another thing we do uh, every now and every couple of years, I think every two years or so, we do what's called the Misfit Regatta. So you guys know where Misfit Splat is out that way? Yeah. Okay, well, we go out there because it's a nice big open area and we have a dry land boat race. Our boats are mostly made out of cardboard, cardboard and uh, we race them back and forth, like literally forward, backward, sideways, whatever way we can. And uh, we, we, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have a really, really good time with that. We usually have a demolition at the end. That's the our boats don't usually make it very far after that. Uh, and now let's see. How are we doing so far? You guys alright? It's good. Appreciate that. I don't. Alright, so uh, talk about our military. This question comes up an awful lot about Malasia. We do not have an air force, we do not have an army, but because we live in the desert, we do have a navy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. that's, right. that's right. So our Malasia Navy is almost completely good not all. 100% composed of inflatable kayaks. We're a small country, we don't have a lot of room for a destroyer or a battleship or something like that. So we have these inflatable kayaks, which we usually take uh, to, uh, well, in this case, the example pictures I, I chose are actually at Lake Mahon, but we don't usually go to Lake Mahon because one time we deployed the Navy there and we almost all died. <laughs> That's a tough place. So we usually go to Dawn <laughs> because of you know, clear water and but uh, at any rate, we're very proud of our Navy. We also, as, as an aspect of our Navy, we have uh, waterproof cameras, basically submersibles, that we can stick under the water and we can see what's going on down there beneath the waves. Um, and the other reason we don't really take a lot, which you can see what's on the water. Bon Jovi. Yeah. Nope. All right. <laughs> okay, you guys are out there. I hear you breathing. Now, even though Malasia is a peace loving nation, who here knows that we are currently in a raging war with the nation of East Germany? <laughs> you know, I like this guy. I'm not explaining what East Germany is. It's fantastic. So, in fact, just to give you an idea of how we have this ongoing war with a country that everyone's pretty sure doesn't exist anymore. But then I guess that's what folks say about the Malasia. But anyway, um, back in the 1980s, I was stationed with the United States Army. And what was then West Germany when used to West was school? Britain too. At any rate, uh, and uh, as armies do, they didn't wake us up in the middle of the night, we'd jump in our tanks and go get ready to rebuild the communist hordes, who fortunately never came, but I was Prime Minister of Malasia at that time, but it was known as the Grand Republic of Wolfenstein, and I have been woken up one too many times. I decided to declare war on the nearest East Bloc country, which was East Germany. And then I forgot all about it. We had a cool war declaration hanging up in my office, which I rediscovered about, I don't know, 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago in the Ministry of the Closet in a plastic cup. And anyway, um, it was like, oh, East Germany is long gone. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of silly. Until I discovered, dum, 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 East Germany is in fact not long gone. And our world carries on because even though East and West Germany were unified in 1991, you know, there was a treaty and so forth, uh, it turns out back in 1973, Fidel Castro of Cuba gave an island off the coast of Cuba to East Germany. It became East German territory. It's called Ernst Tailman Island. And that was not addressed in the Unification Treaty. And so that remains a piece, the only remaining piece of the nation of East Germany. And because it is uninhabited, the only thing there is marine iguanas, and they just don't care. 
our you know, our war will go on probably forever. We do not arrange peace with an added island. And so that's the war we have ongoing. You visit Malaysia, you'll see bomb craters and death and destruction. You can buy war bonds to support our war. <laughs> <laughs> So that is the story for the East German War. And where are we at? Oh, not only do we have our value community, we also have the space program I mentioned. Yes, that's where we launch rockets. We usually launch our rockets at the aforementioned Mrs. Flag because we don't want to set fire to the desert within Malaysia. Nice big open area out there. Uh, on the one on the your left right there is actually our rocket mail. So we briefly experimented with the idea of sending mail by rocket. Before you think it's a crazy idea, the U.S. did that too. <laughs> it actually worked. It was really good. But I mean, with all the drama, you probably would just walk across the country. It's a small country. So, but it was, it was a lot of fun. Walk over and, the house and back up. Yeah, right over, yeah, right over the government house and, and there it is. <laughs> all right, you can just shout, hey! <laughs> All right, this is the Malasia Railroad. We do have a large scale railroad. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> that one was supposed to be funny. <laughs> we do have a large scale railroad, and behind Government House is a park that we call Norton Park. It's named after the bird park. Who here is from the Park? Oh, you guys? Oh, that's cool. You want to tell us about it? No? That's me? All right, okay. Emperor Norton. It's kind of a segue here. Emperor Norton is what we kind of call the patron saint of micro Martians. He was a businessman who lived in San Francisco in the 1860s and 70s, 70s and 80s, 1960s and 70s. He was a very wealthy man, and as wealthy men didn't do, he wanted to be wealthier. So what he did is took all his money, and he sent it into buying up all the rice in San Francisco with the intention of driving up the price of the rice. And instead, what happens a couple of days later, some boatloads of rice arrived from Peru. And the bottom dropped out of the market. He lost all his money, he lost his court cases, he lost his mind, and he disappeared for about four or five years. Reappeared, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure, anyway, reappeared, uh, declaring himself to be Morton the first emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico. You guys didn't know you had the emperor, did you? Huh? I worked out better for you. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> and so for the next, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so, he issued a variety of edicts basically running the country. He dissolved political parties, reassembled them, dissolved Congress, so forth like that. Uh, he actually even said there should be a bridge built across the uh, uh, the bay there from Oakland to San Francisco. Is that crazy or what? This guy, he did. When he, uh, oh, oh, but he was also very well, well respected by San Franciscans. They liked their centers in that city, so the police would take their hats to him. He actually broke up a stop of lynching, broke up some fights, and so forth. He had free food and free clothing by appointment to the emperor, even a seat in the opera in the legislature. That's right. When he died, and he made a stroke outside of Chinatown, his funeral was attended by 25,000 people. Oh, gosh. That's an awfully large funeral for anybody, but especially considering that when Emperor Norton died, he was basically a homeless man. He had five dollars to his name, not, I mean, not counting the money that he himself did make. And because he was the first guy to declare himself to be the ruler of a nation that, that nobody else really thinks he's a ruler of, we consider him to be the first micro-nationalist. The first, yeah, the first micro-nationalist. So, when you visit the Republic of Malaysia, there are Mormons all over the place. We have our own measurement system in the Republic of Malaysia. That's right, we do things a little bit differently. And for, for example, A. Norton, besides being the aforementioned emperor, this is Norton. You know, you go measure things and be like, you know, I've got a ruler or take measure or something like that. It's handy. It's handy. <laughs> <laughs> it's handy to use. You use your hand. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. How am a lot going to measure things after I die. Maybe they'll chop off my hand and keep it in the drawer or something like that. I don't know. It's called lefty. But anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, so throughout Malasia, there are arms because we, we honor and we respect the emperor and more. I was going to go somewhere there, but. What? Oh yeah. So Park Park is park behind your house, and that is also the Malasia Railroad. So you come visit our nation. You can see this railroad in action. And we have here. I do invite you to come visit the Republic of Malasia. We have tours once a month, April through October. Um, obviously, like I said, we don't want to do it in the 
in the colder and wetter weather of the, of the winter time. These are some tourists that have come by, including that young fellow with our flag, very patriotic, it sounds fantastic. And see, that's an aerial view of our nation. That's Red Square right over there. I don't have a pointer, but I'm pointing in North Park where the Mossy Railroad is. And then um, this is all the National Park back here. Behind, uh, behind. Anyway, that is the Republic of Malaysia. Did I leave anything out? No. No? Okay. You want me to shut your spot? That's it. Call me the All right, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to open up the floor to uh, questions. I say comments and concerns, but I don't know. I have a question. Uh, yeah. Right here. You guys can fight it out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, how did you meet your wife? Well, you should tell that story. Because you tell the way back. Yeah. Anybody here, anybody here remember MySpace? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the First Lady and I had gone to a concert over in California, but separately. We did not know that. We went on MySpace, and I found her, and then she sort of found me back. And uh, that is yeah. sort of... So what did you think when you met her? I mean, were you already... Is that something to do at that time? I was, yes. Uh, I have been, 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 been the president of Louis since 1977. Okay. And I was born in 78. Yeah, which is a year before the first lady was born. So, <laughs> anyway. so what did you think when you met him? So when I, he friended me on MySpace, I'm like, sure. You know, okay, whatever. And then he went to Facebook, right? On Facebook, I'm like, friends only, or family only, you know? And then he tried to friend me again, and I'm like, is this guy? What's happening? You know, I always thought he did fun things with his kids, and I like that, so I think that's cool. And so I'm Googling, and I'm like, wait, what? What do you, what do you, you know, because that's what you do with movies this person. And I was like, that's radical. I want to be part of this situation. So, um, but I was like, yeah, I'll be your friend. And then he was like, um, I saw him on Cupid.com, I think it was, and I decided, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I want to go on a date with this guy. Let's see what's going on. And that's when I Googled it after I said, yes, I want to go on a date, because I've seen him on Facebook and all that. And then um, we went on our first date, and we've never been apart since that moment. And like one week later, he was like, will you be my first lady? And I said, I want nothing more in life than to wear a tiara. And he said, this is a republic. You can't wear a tiara. And I said, you have your own country. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> convention that we're going to and my theme is how to support your micronational leader that might be your spouse which is what we do here and um, I have a lot of experience in that after these last almost 15 years now Once in a while, did a tour, but we had like one building. 
See, the post office. No, it was okay. It was good, but we were, you know, we were just getting active. And so to stand there and watch an 11 year old child talk about, do I want to be, have a kingdom? Do I want a monarchy? Do I want this kind of government? I'm, my mind is blown. Who thinks of that 11? Not me, even at 45, right? So good for these guys. This is amazing. So we got back home from, the, from there, and I said, we need to do this in the United States. So in 2015, we decided to create MicroCon, and we did it in Anaheim near Disneyland, so we thought it would be really fun for the kids to go to Disneyland afterwards, because there's a lot of youth. And a lot of the moms were like, I'm not taking you to this weird convention halfway across the United States, right? This is strange. But now they do, because it's our fifth one, and we've been traveling all over the United States, uh, North America, I would say, um, because we've done it in Canada, and Atlanta, and Las Vegas, and we just got back from Chicago. Next year we'll be in Montreal, and next month we'll be in Europe. So it's like full circle going all the way back to Europe again. So they know him. There's these little guys. President Bob is here. I've been seeing him online my whole life. Yeah, you're 10. Your whole life. So I go over, come on, do you want to meet President Bob? It's happening right now. It's happening right now. So they run over. They're just shell-shocked. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. And they get to meet him, they wear the same type hats, the sunglasses, they're mini-me's, a lot of them, let me tell you. And they all have their own ideas on what their country is going to be. Which is absolutely fantastic, absolutely love. Because in spite of, in spite of, in spite of all that adulation, it's absolutely wonderful to see what they do with that idea, that exact same idea. You know, what makes a country? What can I do with this idea of having my own country? Um, it's, it's just wonderful. It really, really, it inspires me. And I mean, because I've been doing this a really long time, there were times I'm like, why am I still doing this? Like, <laughs> it's true. And then I get around these, these young folks that are just starting out and starting out. It, it's just, huh? I, it's just absolutely wonderful. And, and fires me right up. Just go. So another thing that we've been doing also is, before even the pandemic, when Zoom got to be a big deal, was we would go um, like Skype in people's classrooms, and they had already like made their own countries and have their own flags, and we would pop in as guest speakers to be able to you know, tell me about your country and tell me what's going on, and they would ask us questions, and it would be really fun to kind of get an idea. Um, we're really close with the Virginia City School District and Mr. Puncher up there, so we've done lots of field trip locales. I mean, he's been coming to us. Um, last year, it was the funniest thing, we had a neighbor get on the bus, go to school, drive the bus, come down, go to our house for a field trip, get back on the bus, go back into school, go back home. She lived right across the street. <laughs> <laughs> our kids are like, why would we never have a field trip at home? <laughs> so we've been having a really good time just kind of opening people's minds to, you don't have to live the same way everybody else does, why can't you do something different? And that's really important to us. That's a very good question. Actually, no, there's zero. Because micronations are not recognized by, uh, like I said, established nations. And so you're just sort of like doing their own, doing your own thing um, at their goodwill. I mean, in theory, someone can come along the driveway and say, you can't have Malasia anymore. And that's probably gonna be the end of it right there. I'm not gonna fight it, you know, what we lose, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So there is no official recognition, so there's no paperwork. We exist because we say so, and nobody said we, we don't. So. <laughs> That's it? That's exactly right. Yes. I mean, we have, we have that goal to do something bigger than just to declare where you are to be a country. You know, I've reached out to other countries and established countries and, and you know, for diplomatic, uh, you know, relations and so forth. But, I mean, if you think about it, say, I don't know, the nation of the, the Bahamas recognizes Malaysia. Well, now you just start an international incident between the United States and, and the Bahamas. They don't want that. You know, there was all those American tourists. So, you know, so that's why micronations, no micronations actually uh, recognize. There are some that have come a little bit closer than even Malasia because they made a bigger, like, splash and so forth. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's what we're doing, absolutely. What else we got? Yes, ma'am. So you guys are just basically a living, breathing, you know, what am I trying to say here? Farmville or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Clash of, not Clash of the Titans, but Age of Empires or something like that? Yeah, you know so what? It's a video game, you're now living it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Malasia basically is, is, is kind of like, 
Uh, you know, when a kid declares his bedroom to be an independent country because he doesn't want to pick up his socks, huh? You can't yeah, make me do that. It's my country now. That kind of thing. Well, we just never let go of that idea. <laughs> so.
because we'll use my Kwanzaa and be able to travel. So that's a pretty good plus. Um, also, we pay for it, so that's a good plus. <laughs> and as we mentioned, and the Biker Nations are just a lot of young boys, so they're all happy to see her too, not just the president. Okay? <laughs> What is the rate of exchange of your monies? Uh, it's, oh, sorry. It is 80 US cents for one Valora. <laughs> um, it basically comes out to five Valora equaling a standard size to a uh, chunk uh, chip video. So. <laughs> oh, okay. We prefer, we prefer Pillsbury over any other kind, so in yes. case you. Oh, okay. Not the Pillsbury standard, not the Toll House standard, not the Annie's never standard. We do have some ideas for TikTok videos, like blind taste tests from the president to see if you can really tell the difference. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'm an expert on the Just that immunity is fine, but cookie dough taste test is on the high high level. What else we got, guys? I just wanted to say one more thing about some of our micronationalist friends um, that we have. And some, like um, my husband was talking about, some people take things a little bit differently. And I think it's really important to talk about the real world impact that people try to have on their own communities and not just do things online and this and that. And one of my examples that's my favorite is our friend, um, King Travis. Grand Duke Travis from West Antarctica, I'm sorry. And he actually has a, a nonprofit, a 501c, for saving the penguins uh, in Antarctica. And I think it's a really big deal for them to be able to reach out and do something that has real world impact. And that's a big part of MicroCon and when we talk about, like, you know, what are you doing in your area to make life better and to just show that you're here as a, like a little bit of a seriousness um, compared to just, you know, doing things online. And, I want to be allies with you, and allies with you, and allies with you, and I'm going to start a war with you, start a war with you. We don't start, we're not involved in wars besides East Germany, or allies, we're friends to all, because they change their mind every five seconds, and we're not involved in that. So, <laughs> it is, it's, they like to, it's funny. But, um, so, you know, we have been in the Nevada Day Parade, is it 16 years now? And we were sad when the Valley Days Parade stopped because we had been involved in that one in almost over 10 years. So besides just the parades, we do different things around town with the opening of the at Christmas, at the home, the home time Christmas and things like that. We've also opened up for Oodles and Doodles and done like park cleanups and stuff. So it's, I think we just think that, you know, yeah, yes, of course, we like to laugh because humor is a really big deal in, in migrations because, you know, big ego, little country. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun. But we want to see like what can we really do, you know, to make just a little bit of a, a difference, and I think that's really fun and important. Yeah. And we do like have a lot of fun with it. I mean, that's you know having fun. And what's the point? So. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Okay. Who's coming to Velocia next time? Right. Right. Me too. Yeah, we got some hands. That's fantastic. Good deal. Good deal. All right. We got a tour. July, uh, August, September, and then the last one will be in October, then we're going to quit for the winter and take it back up in April. Yeah. And then, uh, for sure, you should some stuff up here. We've got flyers and we got buttons, because you know you want a button. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody have their raffle cards? Our raffle is too much. Because you don't have to go in the floor. This is for the next, or one of our old, old, how did I even say that? Oh, oh, yeah. Oldies pop. So, it's a good time. Okay. Yeah. All right. I can't, I can't read that. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to be doing the... I work for Casino Speed Sunday. We're going to be doing the last four numbers, and it's going to be 6674.